Hey folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatoria. So here's something you don't see that often anymore these days is me holding a katana. Um, and really I want to really kind of boil this down into a fairly simple point, which I'll summarize right here, right now. And that is that katanas are on a global scale, not very big swords. I think a lot of people who see katanas in um, anime and um, even some movies, uh, maybe, you know, Kur Kurosawa films or whatever, um, kind of think that the katana is quite a large sword. And overall, it's not small because it has a long hilt. But the blades do tend to be on the short side. But that's actually not the main point of this video. Um, but before I go on, I just want to put that in a little bit of context for you. Um, and the blades of katanas, of historical antique katanas that survive, um, in many cases it must be admitted that they were shortened in the 19th and 20th centuries in some cases, but nevertheless, the majority of um, antique katanas that you'll find around, and I'm an antique dealer and I see plenty of antique katanas, have blades between 26 and 28 inches. Um, it's fairly um, difficult actually to find a katana um, uh, that is, has a blade of more than 28 inches, which is pretty short by Western standards. Um, just putting that into context, here I've got a mid 19th century, this is a sort of 19th century style katana, obviously it's a modern Chinese replica, but um, it's, a, it's in a 19th century style, more or less. And um, in comparison, above we have a British um, mid 19th century cavalry sabre, which was actually carried during the Indian Mutiny, so it dates to 1857 and um, made by Wilkinson. And you can see it's, you know, considerably longer. And some people would say, oh, but Matt, yeah, but that's a cavalry sabre. Well, okay, at the other end of the spectrum, I've got here a Napoleonic era small sword um, with uh, George III's cipher on it. So this is from about the year 1800, could have been carried by an officer in the Napoleonic Wars. And you can see it's, it's, it's not so much bigger. It's a few inches longer and it's a completely different type of sword. It's a thrusting sword, but nevertheless, this is a small sword, um, and even that has a longer blade. In terms of the actual blade length of these, let's say that these are usually about, I think this one's probably quite long actually by antique standards, this is about 29 inch um, blade, um, but that is quite short. That would be a short saber in Europe, or even a hanger, okay? So many of these have only got sort of 26, 27 inch blades. Um, and that's only about the length of what we would call a hanger, and those are usually one-handed swords. Certainly for a two-handed sword, that's a super short blade. Although it's not short when you compare it with other Asian swords, such as the Burmese Da, for example. So, first thing to say is 19th century katanas are, uh, and 20th century katanas are kind of on the short side. Um, but if we go earlier in period, we do find that katanas um, very often were longer. And I'll switch, I'll switch out sword now over to the uh, Dynasty Forge O Katana. So as the name might suggest, it's a big katana. Uh, o or no in front of a word in Japanese, my understanding is it basically means big thing, big whatever. So a Nodashi is a big sword, O Katana is a big katana. Um, so this is a bigger version, and this is actually more of a kind of long sword typed, um, type sword. And I, in fact, I'll just grab off camera here. I'll just grab the um, Dynasty Forge Bastard Sword for a second. So, I hadn't intended to use this, but it's a good comparison. So, here is a fairly typically sized 14th, 15th century European um, long sword, a bastard sword. And here is the O Katana underneath. And you see the O Katana still is a bit shorter, um, but it's a bit fatter at the cutting portion of the blade. But they're, they're in the same kind of ballpark of size. Now the funny thing is, the O Katana itself is historically a bit of an anomaly um, because katanas, generally speaking, grew out of a desire to have a sword that was smaller and more convenient to carry than the Tashi, okay? Big difference with the Tashi um, is they tend to have, so in the earlier period, so say, say in the 12th, 13th, 14th centuries, the Tashi was um, the, the primary war, the long sword, the primary war sword of samurai. Um, and they tend to be longer of this kind of size, sometimes even longer, although if they're really bigger then they become a nodashi. Um, but um, they tend to be of this size and they tend to have a slightly different um, blade shape. So, and that's, some people define 
katanas and um, katanas and um, tashis in this way, um, but it's it's more complicated than that, and people disagree as well. Um, so you will notice that of these two blades, the uh, the one here, the more normal size katana, does taper slightly. It's slightly thicker at the base of the blade and it does taper down slightly here. Well, most historical tashi from the 12th, 13th, 14th centuries are even more drastic than that. In contrast, the o dashi, um, the, sorry, the um, o katana here is broad and stays broad. That means it's a fearsome chopper, okay? It really, really, it's going to be an awesome, awesome chopper, but it does mean you're carrying more weight at the tip of the blade, which means that you've got more inertia to move around. What we often find if we look at 13th and 14th century um, kind of um, uh, tashis is that they have tapering blades that get narrower to towards the point and are less fat, basically, just before the, um, just before the uh, gradient to the actual point itself. So they actually have more slender points and are more tapered. This does mean that they handle differently, of course, because you've got, much like a longsword which um, tapers, you're bringing the weight distribution back towards the hands and you're making them relatively nimbler at the tip. The O katana here is an unusual object because generally what we see is we see a move from long tashis with tape, slightly tapering blades and then we see a gradual uh, movement or a greater preponderance of the katana coming in um, in the in this kind of 15th, 16th century onwards. Uh, it started even before that um, and it's a shorter sword, it's more convenient to wear originally probably more predominantly the civilian sword um, but they do tend to have a different blade shape a broader uh, less tapered blade shape and that is partly because they're shorter so what you're doing is you're increasing the cut cutting capacity but you're not necessarily making it unwieldy because you, the blade has got shorter but an important thing to mention is this standard size of katana, which I, in many videos, have mentioned is quite short, and you shouldn't necessarily think of these as big swords, because globally speaking, they're, they're not small swords, but they are certainly medium to small um, in size, in, by, by blade size alone anyway. Um, but, um, that being said, they, uh, there is a... Um, there is a transition in Japan. It's not that Japan always had these short katanas. Katanas can be bigger, like the uh, O katana type example here, and tashis definitely are bigger. And certainly if we look at the classical period, uh, certainly just going by century alone, and obviously um, history moved in different ways in different countries at different times, but if we just compare the 14th century, so if you're looking at a 14th century European knightly sword like this, if we look at the 14th century Japanese knightly or samurai sword, then in fact it's the tashi, okay? It's the tashi, not the katana. And so people talk about katanas as samurai swords, but the tashi is just as much a samurai sword, and in some ways you could say even more so uh, in terms of its origins and who carried it. The katana was carried by lots of different people. The tashi really was carried almost, um, well certainly predominantly, by the, by the noble, by the aristocracy, by the samurai, by the knightly classes. And the tashi itself is of long sword size. So, I'm going to finish up there, um, but to summarise, the katana is not a big sword in its typical antique form, but that typical antique form that we're usually exposed to is its final kind of 18th, 19th century form. If we look to earlier forms, you do in find, in, indeed find larger examples. And if we go back to the kind of medieval period, as it would be called in Europe, actually the tashi is a comparison to the longsword in many ways and is of comparable size. So some people who argue that, oh, the katana is shorter because Japanese people are shorter than European people, well, there may be an element of that, but actually, if you look at the kind of medieval tashi, the tashi is a similar size to the European longsword. Maybe slightly shorter, um, but it is certainly bigger than the normal types of katanas that uh, people are exposed to these days. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll stick a link to the um, O Katana at Dynasty Forge on this. It's a very, very nice sword. I, I will. I haven't reviewed it yet. I'm very aware of that fact, and there will be a review of this coming up so, uh, soon. Sword uh, up soon. It is a very, very nice sword. 
Thanks for watching. Uh, check out my other playlists and videos. Give us a like and a subscribe. And um, I will see you really soon for another video on Scholar Gladiatoria channel. Cheers, folks.